Hello. Uh, this is another of my most popular videos in my Spanish channel. I have edited out those unnecessary parts. I have dubbed it to English to bring it here for you. And in this video, I will show you the different kinds of connections there are for gas systems, how they work, which are the good and bad practices when installing them or repairing them. And uh, I hope you enjoy it just as much as my Spanish audience. Now let's go and see it. Regarding gas systems, we basically have two kinds of connections. Permanent joints or soldered fittings and temporary joints or screw-in fittings. Permanent joints are those bonded by soldering or brazing. For example, in this case, we have a fitting that goes on the end of a pipe. We put solder that goes in by capillarity, creating a strong joint. It covers the pipe's whole surface. And if you can see, if soldering is well done, it also covers all the inside surface of the fitting in that part occupied by the pipe. This has been well soldered, giving a perfect joint. It holds both parts firmly together, but at the same time, it covers any gap where gas might escape through the joint. They are permanent because the only way of disassembling them is using a torch, heating them with a soldering torch, melting the solder and separating the parts, or cutting the tubing with a hacksaw. The other kind of joints are the temporary joints or screw-in fittings. Screw-in fittings are those which are threaded. One part is the male thread, and the other part is the female thread. The male fitting has a thread on the outside. The female fitting has a thread on the inside. When the nut is turned around the male fitting, they get joined. And they can be joined and separated at will at any moment. These joints are also called mechanical joints because when you turn the nut on the male thread, what we have is a compressive force acting over one element that presses against another element which has an identical surface. And that pressure, that compression between two surfaces produces the perfect seal, preventing gas from escaping. Then, this is a mechanical seal created by mechanical or compressive forces. The purpose of these kinds of joints in gas systems is to be able to disassemble. That is, we need to separate one part of the system so we can access its parts and repair it or modify it or make a new connection in that part. The part we disassemble usually is a gas appliance connected to the system. If we had to unsolder the part, it would be more difficult to disassemble that appliance. There are different kinds of mechanical joints. I will describe and show you each one, how they work, etc. In the first place, we have cone-to-cone -cone joints. Like this one. This is the male cone or sphere, which is compressed by the female nut into the female cone, which is inside the male threaded part, where the inverted cone or inverted sphere must fit perfectly with the male cone, producing a cone-to-cone -cone joint. Then, as I said before, 
we turn this nut that has a catch or face at its end, which pushes a lip at the end of the male cone, compressing this cone into the female cone tightly. One first tightens the nut with one's fingers, then one uses a tool to tighten a bit more to get a perfect contact and make it leak proof. When both surfaces are perfectly aligned and both cones are perfect, both surfaces come together perfectly. If they are tightened firmly, there is no way gas can get through these kinds of gas systems. These kinds of joints or connections don't require any interposed materials. If you tighten this fully and it still has a leak, the only option is replacing the fixture because one of the parts has a scratch which is big enough to let gas through however much you tighten it. Another kind of cone to cone joint are these. We have a pipe which usually is straight like this one which we can flare with a special tool. With that special tool we have widened this part increasing its diameter as you can see here. And this widening produces here a cone which fits perfectly on the male cone on the top of the fitting here. Now this is a nipple, a nipple threaded on both sides. When we tighten this nut onto the male thread what we are doing is compressing the cone of the pipe against the cone of the nipple achieving a perfect seal. And thanks to the softness of the copper, when tightening the nut, the copper gets squashed and adapts perfectly to the surface of the cone on the nipple. Now, this is the same principle of flared cone with which we join a pipe to the stop valve. This stop valve, just like the nipple, has a small cone on its tip. Both cones are identical. So, when we put the pipe's cone there and we tighten the nut, we achieve a perfect seal between the cone of the stop valve and the cone of the pipe. Now, if you notice, this stop valve belonged to someone's gas system and a carbo gas fitter put PTFE tape there. He was called to fix a leak in the stove's stop valve. But instead of fixing the source of the leak, he tried to stop it with PTFE tape. That's not a solution. You should never put sealing tape in this part of a stop valve. The seal against a leak is achieved on the flared tip of the stop valve. Not on the thread, but over here. If it does not seal properly, it must be repaired. The leak is either in the pipe flaring because it is deformed and the pipe must be annealed again to soften the copper so it can readapt to the stop valve's cone 
or it is in the cone tip of the stop valve. Because it has a fissure due to fatigue, it's too old, or it was damaged with a tool in such a way that it can't be repaired. Then the stop valve must be replaced, but you should never put PTFE tape on the thread. It's not technically appropriate because the seal is produced by compressing the cones with the nut, the cone of the pipe and the cone of the stop valve, first by hand and finally with a tool. The copper must be squashed, producing a perfect seal between both surfaces, the copper surface and the bronze cone. Another type of connection for gas systems is the gasket type or single flare joint. This one is not conical, like the one we saw on the nipple and the stop valve. This one is completely flat. And for this reason, we can seal it with a washer or gasket either of fiber, elastomer, or rubber. When we squeeze this washer between two flat metal parts, it produces a perfect seal. Then, this connection, where a flat washer seals the surfaces, it also needs a joint with a flat surface. This is a male adapter that has a flat end. This surface is flat. So, when we create pressure or compression between the surfaces of the flat washer and the flat face of the pipe, thanks to the nut screwing onto the male adapter, we create a seal. Then we put on this nut and we tighten it along the male adapter's thread, compressing the fiber washer. One must tighten it, but not too much, because a fiber washer is delicate. It can break if you tighten it too much with a tool, and then you'll have a gas leak. So, you tighten it slowly, verifying with your gas detector if it has sealed well. Once it has sealed well, you should be safe with an extra one quarter turn. And this fix should last a long time. It will always be a good idea to double check using a foam producing liquid once you have finished. The other kind of temporary joints is the one that includes two threaded parts, but not using a nut. This is a female adapter, a fitting threaded on the inside. Just like the nut, it has thread on the inside, but it is a fixed part, soldered to a pipe. Usually, it is fixed to the wall. You can't move it. So, if we want to put an appliance here, an appliance we will have to be servicing uh, by disconnecting it, we can't solder it. We need a temporary joint. And to be able to seal this threaded fitting and avoid a gas leak, we must use sealing tape wrapping it around the male thread. We wrap a good amount of tape here. So when the threads are turned on each other, the tape gets squashed between the threads, compressed so tightly that a perfect seal is produced. See my video on applying sealing tape, where I show you exactly what happens to the tape between the threads. The link is in the description. In this case, we must get the male thread 
as far inside the female fitting as is possible to increase the sealing ability of this connection. Once finished, we open the gas valve and verify there is no leak. If we find a leak, the whole procedure must be repeated until there is no leak in the joint. Now, for these temporary joys to work, it is critical that one part should be able to turn around the other one. To be able to join these parts and create the required compression between hard metals and soft metals, between metal and sealing tape, or between flat surfaces and fiber washer, the parts have to turn. We have to turn them so they tighten and seal, and also if we want to get them loose, so we can separate the pipes. Why do we do this? Well, in this case, a stop valve usually is fixed to the wall. That makes it safer. And it is the beginning of a connection with an appliance. Suppose it's a kitchen stove, an instantaneous water heater, or a gas heater. If we have to repair the plants, in many cases, we need to remove the plants from its location. If we need to clean the flues, we have to remove the water heater. If a repair is very complex and it has to be taken to our workshop for repairs and testing, we have to take it off. There are many reasons for having to remove an appliance from its supports. And for that, we must detach it from the gas piping and water piping, and that involves releasing a threaded joint. The stop valves let us do this without affecting the rest of the system. Now, if some cowboy gas fitter has the brilliant idea that if he solders all the gaps around a nut, he will stop a gas leak, he is nutty, to say the least, because that solder will impede us to turn the nut or fitting. So we can't turn it and tighten or loosen that joint. We won't be able to achieve the necessary compression and the seal and fix a leak. A leak that will appear due to the natural wear of materials. In this case, we have a hard bronze surface with a conical shape and a soft copper surface, also conical. The soft copper surface, when we squash it, it gets compressed, forming a seal. But with time, copper gives. It also can be affected by vibrations, earthquakes, impacts, or mishandling, which loosen it little by little. Many things can happen which create a minimum separation between the surfaces, producing a leak. The most basic repair we can do to stop a leak is tighten a joint, or we have to dismantle the parts to repair them and produce a seal. If it's soldered there, it is impossible to loosen it without using a soldering torch, and even then it ruins the threads. On the other hand, these stop valves contain plastic parts inside them. So applying a torch 
near them to solder or to remove solder submits them to temperatures capable of melting the plastic and ruining the stop valve. So, you should never heat this area near a stop valve with your soldering torch. If you need to solder so near the stop valve, you should remove the valve first. You remove the nut and tubing, you solder, and later connect them again, avoiding heat reaching the stop valve. But this is not the only case why we should not put solder here. In all those cases where a nut or a threaded fitting is screwed onto a thread to produce a seal, that nut or fitting must be able to turn freely whenever it may be required. Putting solder on the top of a nut, believing you can seal it that way, just shows how little someone understands how a seal is achieved. It is technically absurd, it's ridiculous, it's irregular and bloody stupid. Putting solder inside the threads of a male adapter and female adapter or nut, believing you can seal these kinds of joints, is equally absurd and possibly against the rulings in your country. A gas fitter with these kinds of bad practices can be considered a criminal because inevitably there will be a gas leak in that joint. Solder put here will not stop gas coming out here. There is a good reason for fittings to have thread. It's not a pretty decoration. In this type of joint, we don't put solder or sealing tape here. If this joint has a leak, we must take it apart, repair it, or, as in this case, Replace the fiber or rubber washer. We remove the old one and put a new one on. If this surface is cracked, chipped or deformed and can't function properly, then we must make a new one or make it perfectly flat again. But putting solder here or on the thread is not how it should be repaired. In this kind of joint, the last thing we do is put the sealing tape on. The first thing we do is solder the pipe to the fitting, and once it's cold, then we put the sealing tape on. If we heat up this part with a torch, while there is sealing tape wrapped around the thread, we'll burn it, and we'll have to remove the tape and do it all over again. There are other kinds of temporary joints, like flange joints, unions using O-rings, and joints using metal rings, etc. But these are the most common and important ones. Well, that's it regarding temporary or screw-in joints. Do you have the same ones in your country? Well, I hope you liked my video. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, share it, subscribe, comment, and don't forget to click on the bell if you want to receive notifications for new videos that are surely coming up. So, thanks a lot. Bye-bye.